Smith. I can't answer the telephone right now, but I would like to talk with you if you leave your name and telephone number after the beep. You have only one minute, and if possible, repeat. I'll get back with you. If not, call again. I hope you want to see my toilet seat art museum here in Alamo Heights. You're always welcome, and there's no charge. Thank you. been living here in uh, Alamo Heights about uh, 35 years and I've been working on toilet seats about 35 years but I'm from a plumbing family that is from Eastland Texas and uh, so I thought maybe I ought to stick with my trade since I'm a retired master plumber I thought maybe that I'd just do some artwork on my toilet seat collection I consider myself a collector. I uh, never throw anything away. I keep it and I mount it on a toilet seat. So I am a curator and a collector of everything, anything. My dad and I started out with putting little deer horns on a plaque that he would cut out and varnish and uh, put his deer horns on. One day we came in off of a hunt with a couple of little uh, horn little uh, antlers and I said well I'm going to use this toilet seat to put my antlers on and I hung it up on the wall and I liked it so well until I stuck with the antlers uh, all my uh, hides. I've got uh, rattlesnake rattlers and uh, uh, turkey feathers and everything on toilet seats and that's what started me out. The Central Plum and Supply House about 20 years ago had about 50 toilet seats laying on their dock and they was going to put them in the dumpster and I was there uh, at that time I was doing plumbing work and uh, I asked them what they were going to do with all that group of toilet seats that are on the dock out there, they said they all go in the dumpster. I said, well, I'd like to have some. He said, well, you take your screwdriver and you take the hinge off. You can either keep the lid or the ring, but half of it has got to go in the dumpster. Okay, I took those off and took them in, did some artwork, and the next time I was there, I said, here's what I did on these toilet seat lids. And I said, I'm in need of some more. And he said, in fact, the factory rep told me, he said, well, you can have all of these and you don't have to break them apart and you don't have to take the hinge off and throw half of them away. I do not want to use the ring to put anything in the hole of a toilet seat. I did that on the uh, Orkin Yellow Jacket Hive. I got a bunch of yellow jackets that were coming and uh, stinging me. They stung, one of them stung me on top of the head. I said, I'll just put you on my toilet seat. I would not have had this much room in my garage had I not had a motor home. At one time, I put a 21-foot uh, American Clipper in here along with my car and my truck and my motorcycle. And uh, it's actually a... a four car garage if I could knock out a petition and put four cars in here but the, the I put a drop down in the center of it here and uh, put about 50 toilet seats on each side of that drop and now I'm running out of room and I've got them stacked on top of each other and I uh, don't even have room enough to uh, hang them all on the wall but they're about seven deep and about uh, 30 or 40 uh, toilet seats long and all across the back wall and all across the uh, the center. I, I need a bigger place, but I doubt if I ever move out of this neighborhood. I'm uh, I'm not satisfied with the uh, location like I would if I were out on the main drag and could open my doors and a lot more people uh, look at my collection. There, there's about uh, a thousand visitors a year that come in and, and visit my museum. And uh, they will tell people that they have been in the museum and give them my website and they want to come and see. And so I'm, I'm busy 
most all the time, showing people. A lot of times a person will say, well, I've got this or that, and uh, uh, I would say, well, if you'll give it to the toilet seat museum, it'll become property of the museum, but I will put it on a toilet seat. Aren't you the one that gave me the rattlesnake rattlers? Mm-hmm. All right. This is the first time that this little boy has seen his picture on there. Look in there, that's Chase. This is Chase. Hey, how about that? <laughs> He's my buddy. The rattlers were donated by Chase and the hog tusks were donated by Robert, his grandfather. We were driving by one day and I saw this and we'd read about it before in the Texas Highway Magazine. And I said, well, let's stop and see this. We've got, we got to see it. It's part of Texas history. And uh, I'm still amazed every time I come in, I see something different and something new, something fantastic. My dog tags, I started in with them as number one. This is, this is project number one. This is what I did on my artwork, flocked me a little dachshund because our dachshund was 18 years old whenever it died. And I've got a lot of its years of tags here. But this is number one. That's exhibit number one. And then since I started out with dog tags and my wife said that I had promised to uh, stop at 500, I said, well, I need to fix me some dogs. So I fixed that many dogs on there. And this is exhibit number 500. So now I've been in the dog house for 168 times since I completed that many more. My wife does not participate in uh, uh, doing any of the art or doing any of the collecting or anything. She is a bookworm and she loves to read the paper and read magazine and read her books. But my daughters, both of them, I've got one that lives next door and she's always giving me something and said, well, Daddy, you want to put this on the toilet seat and I'll uh, take it and uh, do some artwork. My name is Brenda Sellers and I'm the daughter of Barney Smith and I think his art around here is great. I really didn't ever think of him as being a collector but his mother was one so I think it was probably in his blood all this time that we were growing up and we just didn't know it. I contributed this one piece to his museum. We had um, been invited to be on the Montel Williams show and so Dad had taken some of his work and talked to Montel Williams. And so we met this couple, and they were from Ohio, and they did eggshell art. And so Dad asked, well, if you ever have any broken eggshells, we'll just send them to me. So he did. they did, and so he's got this huge box of broken eggshells, and they um, he didn't know what to do with them, so I just had the idea, well, maybe I would just kind of represent what they did in their yard. And so I kind of made a mosaic. I have put from 1992, I was 70 years old. And uh, I put my birthday cards on uh, my 70th birthday. And I've got birthday cards on from 70 up until 82 this year. And I've already got a 83 hanging up there for next year for my birthday cards that will be given to me after May the 25th of uh, 2004. Then I'll get to complete that one and hang up a, a 2005. These seats, uh, these plaques that I've got hanging up in here are not for sale. In fact, I have uh, been asked many times, well, would you sell me this one? You can make another one because you've got another seat, you've got the material that it goes on and everything. I said, no, it's not for sale. In fact, I've got the application for the Guinness World Records in the house, and they sent it to me several years ago for me to fill out and see if they would put me in the Guinness World Records. One of my neighbors said that they didn't want the, those big 55 passenger buses coming in here and uh, letting people off and and them sitting there blowing uh, exhaust in their backyard. Even the tour, the travel 
the trolley car from the San Antonio uh, Tourist Bureau. They come in every once in a while from McNays. Whenever he said he had someone from New Hampshire, I said, well, let them out and let them uh, look around, sign my guest book. And before he was two blocks away from here, I had already stuck me a tack there in New Hampshire, the last state that I needed for my, uh, all of my 50 states. The last one that I added to my out of the country is Wales. So I'll be adding whatever, whoever comes, but this takes care of all of the United States. This plaque is dedicated to every visitor that signed my guest book. Bernie's been our neighbor for many, 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 many years. He's a good fellow, and I'm not sure about his art. <laughs> he, he draws a lot of traffic uh, back of our garage, and sometimes we have to ask him to move. But he's a, he's a good fellow. We enjoy being their neighbors. But I'm not quite hooked on his art yet. Maybe it'll grow on me. You know, all the kids in the neighborhood, they feel comfortable going over there and giving like their little plastic snake collection to him to put on the toilet seat and, you know? I mean, he's just kind of a community builder in that way. Yeah, it's not get, just his art that's cool, you know? Yeah, kids will give him the most um, bizarre things. Things that don't even make for a good toilet seat lid. <laughs> and he'll find a way to not only uh, incorporate it into a masterful series, but uh, brag about it to people. Kids always come by. Yeah, those are turkey, wild turkey feathers. And there's a bearded hen up there. A hen doesn't supposed to have a beard, but that one did. So I killed her and I put her head on the toilet seat. How about that? First I thought it was kind of weird and everything, but it's amazing all the stuff that toilet seats. I, I just never pictured toilet seats as art <laughs> until now. He is an example for all of us because he's uh, about to be 83 years old, right? Right. 83, and I think he's an example for us, and especially for the young uh, children, that um, we can always be active. See, I think his work draws people in, but, but that's not, I mean, his art is what draws people in there. But I think the, the value of having somebody like that in our neighborhood is that he's a mentor. I mean, he's this 80-something year old guy who has a lot to offer, teach people. I mean, we see kids over there all the time. You know, a lot of those kids probably don't have grandparents or, I don't know, somebody, somebody that will spend all afternoon with you if you want to. People come to visit and we say, do you want to go and see the uh, museum next door? Is a museum? Yeah, a toilet seat museum. Some people find that very interesting and some people um, find that that shatters their reality. That people shouldn't be doing that kind of thing. That's crazy making. And that's what's wrong with America. This is a real marijuana leaf here that I picked off of the plant myself and stuck it in my pocket and took it up to the police department and I said, do I have a marijuana leaf? And uh, the chief police said, well, you do have one, but you can't display it without my permission. And so I said, well, give me permission. I've got all of these arrowheads. I've got all this Boy Scout uh, merit badges and all that. And I want to put my marijuana leaf on a toilet seat. Well, the million dollars was given to me by uh, Henry Meade. He works for the Federal Reserve, but he does not work where they shred the money. And so here the residue is equivalent to $1 million. That that's one million dollars. Every every dollar, every bill has been accounted for. So they counted it. I didn't count it. I can't put it back together. They said if you can put it back together, you can spend it. It's still good. <laughs> On the outside, I think you can see it better. Up here, where I've got the uh, we were here is the Berlin Wall. The uh, flags come down to the piece of the Berlin Wall, there where the crack is, the east and the west. Piece of insulation, and I did my artwork up there on the booster and the uh, club, the Challenger before it blew up. January the 28th of 86. I, I did not find this. I found it in a collection of my fireman buddy, 
uh, killed himself across the street over here and I went over they had a bunch of boxes sitting for the trash men to take off and put in the dumpster and I said well I need a souvenir from my buddy and I went over there and opened up a box and took this era this uh, high scraper out and that's that's in remembrance of my farming buddy year and a half or two years after I had my left eye surgery well then I had trouble with my right eye Dr. Jane put my right eye my left eye a little bit uh, far out whatever it is and uh, uh, I'll put your this right eye a little bit in so that whenever you open up both eyes they will you won't miss anything in the middle. Well my friend Herb Hornig that has the wooden nickel museum here in San Antonio he gave me a bunch of wooden nickels to put on a toilet seat and this is what he has given me to mount on a toilet seat and some of those are old timers so I'm proud of his collection I'm the owner of the Wooden Nickel Museum. We have about a half million wooden nickels. Barney's been kind of a landmark around this area for quite a while. Uh, I met him when I saw him on the Texas Country Reporter. And uh, I decided to go find out where that actually was and go see him in the museum. And a couple of years later, I got on the Texas Country Reporter too. We both have a very unique museum here in San Antonio. Uh, it's not just unique to San Antonio, but unique to the world. I think now he's the only one that has this kind of art in, uh, in the United States. There was another gentleman up north somewhere, but I think he passed away, and I think Barney's the only one now that has this type of art. John Katopoulos from Byron, California, uh, he had 400 toilet seats hanging on his fence and he died and uh, they put a dumpster there and uh, throwed away his uh, toilet seats into the city dump. Well several of them were saved out and now they are trying to get someone that has uh, some of his artwork to donate them back to the city. Barney has been on numerous TV shows and radio interviews and in print and he is very uh, enthusiastic about what he does. I don't know uh, much about art and I don't think it's symbolic of anything uh, but what he is putting together and, and cataloging and, and making in his art representations is a little bit of history each one having a story to tell. I think that he takes something that people uh, discard and give no uh, value to and he uh, gives it value, gives it worth, uh, makes it beautiful and I think elderly in our society aren't, uh, aren't seen too dissimilarly from toilet seat lids. I would like for other people to look at my artwork and appreciate it enough to where that they say that that old boy has got things that he did not throw away, other people did not throw away, they gave it to him to be mounted and it becomes a, a well, an antique you might say. In a hundred years, I think that it would be nice that both museums were still here in San Antonio for people to come and visit. There seem to be a lot of people interested in it in the museum as, as a collection, so hopefully someone um, will be able to do something with it, that it'll be somewhere to, to live on, not only to represent my dad, but just the times. I have two younger sisters, and one of them my uh, middle, the middle child is really interested in keeping it as a museum and so I hope she can. I'm so glad that you came by so that I could show you my toilet seat museum and come back and see me whenever you've got time, anytime. So long.